Hi, this is Bilal from Speckle. In previous video, I showed you how to go from Revit into Power BI and view your model in 3D. In this one, I want to start interacting with the received data and extract some information out of it. In this case, we are going to extract the category information and do some visualizations and filtering in the Power BI report. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll start by clicking on the transform data button, which will open the Power Query editor. And here is our original uh, received data. So I'm going to rename this query to source or actually row speckle data because I don't want to edit this original table. I'm going to create a reference to it by right clicking on the query and click on reference, which will create a link to the original query. So when we refresh the source, all the additional steps we're going to add here will also get reflected in this query. So there are multiple ways to extract category information, but first we need to understand the structure of the received data. So I'll start by clicking on one of the received elements, in this case, this Revit wall. Let's click on this record object, which will open a preview of this records right here. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can see it better. So as you can see, records are basically key value pairs. It has some fields on the left, such as its ID, its family, height, category, some parameters, etc. And the values are on the right. For instance, its type is interior, whatever. It is category is walls, which is what we are interested in in this case. So now we know that the category information is stored inside the records under the category key and its value represents the corresponding Revit category. So there are multiple ways to extract this information. First, we can click on this button, which will expand the existing data column and replace it with the columns we select from this dialog. So in this case, we are only interested in the category. So I'm going to check this option. Do I want to use the original column name as prefix? No. And click on OK. So this will replace the original data column with the extracted information. But I guess you can see the limitation here. It is replacing the original data column which is limiting because we, maybe you're, you still want to extract some additional information from the data column. That's why I don't really recommend expanding an existing column. Instead, adding an additional column is more logical. So let's remove that step and do add a new column. So we already know where the category information lives. So let's add a new column by clicking on the add column and custom column. And from this dialog, we can define our new column. We can give it a name. In this case, our column name will be category and the formula. So we're going to use the lookup functionality to extract the relevant information. Our data lives inside data. And as you can see, when I double clicked on data, it put it inside square brackets, which is what lookup function does. So I'm going to add an additional square brackets and simply type in category and click OK. What this will do is go through each record under the data column and extract the category information. All right, so here they are. There's doors, curtain wall mullions, the columns, walls, rooms, etc. So, but there are a lot of errors as well. We can easily get rid of those errors by highlighting this red icon and click on remove errors, which will remove all the rows that contains the error under the category column. Perfect. So this is the second way. And there's actually another way to you know, extract category information, which is by interacting with the speckle type. So speckle type uh, represents the type of objects that are sent and stored in the speckle. For instance, a Revit wall is stored under objects.builtelements.wall, which is a wall schema that represents a wall in speckleverse. And it's under objects.builtelements Revit, Revit wall. So I know that Revit wall is inside the object.builtelements wall. 
a Revit column is going to be inside the Revit column key. I see there is a Revit material, there is a Revit instance, there is an area, there is a room, right? So if you are interested in some basic and fundamental categories such as rooms, walls, areas, floors, you know, ceilings, etc., then you can filter your Revit elements by their speckle type as well. But the limitation of speckle type is that there is no corresponding speckle type for every Revit category, especially for component instances, right? Like generic models or furnitures or casework. We don't have a corresponding speckle type for it. So that's why I think going through the extraction methods and extracting the category information and doing filtering from there is more safe. Okay, so we have extracted. Let's rename this query to extracted category and press enter. So now we can go back to Power BI and start interacting with the visual. All right, so our query with the extracted categories is right here, and I can also see the category column right here. Okay, so let's make this visual a bit smaller so I can add some other stuff. Let's make it maybe something like this. And then I will add a slicer by clicking on this. Let's make this half. And I will also select tree map visual. So yeah, let's drag and drop the category column into the slicer. And also I'll do the same for the tree map. The category will be category and the values will also be category. So I can see uh, the count of elements per category. So I can see there are a lot of walls, a lot of furniture elements here, but not a lot of railings, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's select the visual and you can see I can select some items, but oh, the tooltip information is empty. We just extracted the category information. Let's add that as the tooltip info. Simply drag the category into the tooltip data and now when you select an element, you can see its category in Power BI. Let's actually rename this. So it doesn't say first category, it only says category. Okay, here we go. Category walls, category topography. Perfect. Now let's start interacting with the slicer first. I will filter out all the floors. And here are all the floors in my model, but I don't like this ghosting effect in my visual. So I'm going to change that while the visual is selected. Simply click on the format, your visual and under visual settings, there's the object display option and change the context display from ghosted to hidden, which will hide everything else, right? Let's isolate furniture elements. Ta-da, here are all the furnitures. Let's maybe do the same for rooms. And yeah, the visual not only interacts with the slicer, but also, but it also interacts with other visuals as well. So let's highlight maybe walls in my model. Here are all the walls. Let's do the same for doors. Here are all the doors. And one more generic models maybe. I can see they are like really light, but yeah, that's because they're white. Here we go. All right, so that's it. In this video, we have extracted the category key from the received records and created some visuals interacted with the viewer. If you have any questions or if you faced any issues while following this tutorial, just let me know in the comment section below or even better at Speckles Forum, speckle.community. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.